It's a little teeny tiny baby, and this thing is so skinny. There's the Gila monster. It's just incredible. So I'm up early. It's uh, like 5 a.m. It's kind of chilly out, but there's a huge storm rolling in, and we haven't had any water on the ground here for uh, almost two months now. So that means that snakes are gonna be coming out to take advantage of it. I originally thought that I might be able to just be out in this storm uh, while that's happening, but this is looking pretty substantial. So I'm gonna hang out at home and then go out. I might not see as much that way, but I also won't be struck by lightning and that's moving really fast. I'm gonna go in. Okay, lightning's over. I don't have any rain stuff, so this is as good as I can do. Um, but there should be snakes where I'm going. I'm taking a bit of a gamble because normally we don't get any rain in October, so I'm not quite sure where they are. I'm going to assume, based on what I saw a couple weeks ago, that they are at or near den sites. So I'm just gonna go straight to uh, a rattlesnake den and see if anything is up. There could be nothing. Uh, I bet there's something. And I guess the question is how much? So here's why this works. It's the same as the winter. Uh, it's not warm out right now. It says it's 60 degrees, so it's not cold either, but it still might be something you don't expect rattlesnakes to be in. And when you have a period of drought like that, when there's just no chance to drink for more than a month, two months, you know, like it's been, um, everything has to. I mean, winter is here. During the summer, they can at least move around and go, if they have a water source, they can go to it. But in the winter time, it's too cold. So they just have what they have and just hope that they get some rain and they can go months without an opportunity. So it doesn't matter if it was 30 degrees today and it started raining, the snakes would come out if they're out there doing so Usually this happens for me in December. I'm hoping that happens. Also, they'll still come out. It's just kind of weird territory. We don't really get freak storms in mid-October. I don't know, I'll learn something today. Either they'll be there or they won't, but either way, I'll know what happens if it rains in October after a drought. Well, this might take a little while or not happen. Um, I knew this would happen at some point. Uh, but the big rattlesnake den that I have been following for the last 10 years is looking like it's going to be a bunch of homes. Uh, my excitement for today has left. <laughs> this is how it is, but it's a bummer when, you, when it's something that you've been watching for a while. And yeah, there's always a couple of comments about, you know, that I'm a hypocrite because I have a house and at some point the house was desert. Yes, that's that's how it is. You're not, you're not helping the situation. But also, does Arizona need to build as if uh, the land is limitless here? No. We have enough problems with water and congestion and other issues anyway. And it's just one little rock pile, but man, that sucks. All right, well, I'm gonna see if I can still see some snakes anyway. Okay, I found a place I can go. Uh, it's a few miles hike in though, so. So I may not see anything at all. Normally it's best to be out here right when the rain is starting. It wasn't possible. So you can get here right when it's ending, and that wasn't possible either. So I've hiked a few miles out to the location, and the sun is starting to come out. So that offers another opportunity. Um, but it's not as compelling. A lot of times, snakes that have gotten a good drink after a winter rain, doesn't matter if the sun comes out after, they're not gonna come out and warm themselves and immediately start to lose the moisture they've gained. So we'll see, I'm here. Hopefully I find something out. Hey, look at that, it worked. There's a big female Western Diamondback sitting there and I've been here for a few seconds. I guess they're still gonna come out. I wonder if I see a bunch of them today or this is it. I'm not sure. So I was able to get a little better look at where the construction is and what's going on. Um, there's just no access back here anymore, which 
it's kind of a pain for me, but it's actually good because this is a place that people go shooting and, um, you know, take this how you want, but the community of people that shoot in grassland in during fighter season, uh, when they see rattlesnakes or any animal, they just blast them. So it's actually really good for this den in the short term, but, but, uh, the neighborhood is maybe a mile away. And that means that some of the snakes that are here that, uh, don't really see people very often. I think these are going to be some that we're going to be finding in people's yards starting as soon as those homes show up. So I think it's time as soon as the, the office in that community is put together uh, to go introduce myself because we're going to get to know one another <laughs> one way or another. But for now, I don't think there's any action that needs to be taken at this den site to preserve these snakes. I think they'll be just fine. I'm not really seeing anything else. Uh, I think I missed it because that snake that I did see was breaking coil and was kind of on its way down. So I think a lot of stuff came up to drink. And then that time where they could actually come get something to drink had passed. And now it's just cold. Now it's just cold and wet. And there's no reason to be on the surface anymore. Um, so they're not going to be. So I might get a straggler or two. But I think the prime event, uh, I just missed it when I was walking in. So one of the things I want to see is that in December, this is usually when we get this event. When we have that long period with no there's a gila monster this is cool because i i've never seen a gila monster here until this last spring and it's out again which means that this animal left went out all spring all year and has now come back here to den i'm going to try to get a little closer if it dives into the rocks if it sees me or gets disturbed um, then i will show you a photo of it that i just took uh, for safety it's sitting on a rock. It might bask there if I can move slowly enough to not bother it. Actually, I'll get my camera, my actual camera, and get some footage of it. There it is. This Gila monster might be waiting to bask when the sun comes out, but it definitely is out because of the moisture. And I'm just excited to see it out at all. <laughs> I mean, not just the excitement of seeing a Gila monster, but the absolute sight fidelity of these animals. I mean, this is exactly the rock, I think, that I saw it sitting on in like February or early March. It's just incredible. Not what you'd expect to see Gila monsters or any reptiles in, or me for that matter, but here he is. And the reason he's out is because of that rare event of a long period of dry and then sudden moisture. There's explosive activity with reptiles. And it'll be over by the afternoon. And there's a big diamondback sitting out right there waiting for the sun. I'll get over here and get a photo of it, but Animals do seem to be still out at the den, which is pretty amazing considering it was like 110 degrees last week. We didn't know what they were doing, but I guess the calendar means more than the weather. And here's another one. It's a neonate. It's a little teeny tiny baby, and this thing is so skinny. That's not good. I don't know if this little one's going to make it through the year. Um, it's only shed its skin one time. It doesn't look like it's been able to get a meal at all. That's rough. At least it's getting a drink, but you need food, little guy. I'm going to leave you alone, though. So I ended up seeing three rattlesnakes total and a Gila monster. It's not a ton of them, but... It's still, you know, I got what I wanted out of this. And even though it's a bummer that I can't get back here because of the road, I saw so much trash there. Um, shooting trash, just bottles, garbage, people dumping stuff. I think it's probably good that the road isn't there. It's not as convenient for me, but I don't mind hiking a couple miles to see something I love. I don't think that any of those people are going to waddle back here to shoot cans. 
So if it has a little protection to these animals and the little time that this area has left as a wild space, then I think it's a good thing and it's a good day. And uh, I'm gonna go get breakfast and decide what I'm gonna do from here. But started on a kind of roller coaster and I'm happy at the end, so. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you next time.